Welcome! In this series of videos, we will look at software add-ons for the PowerBasic Windows Compiler. Today we will look at building the MyLittleGrid add-on custom grid into your Windows client application. What we're going to do in today's video is we're going to build an application from scratch and we're going to embed a statically linked library which will be the MyLittleGrid library. So once you've downloaded the My Little Grid distribution file, you'll find that it contains four zip files. The zip file we are primarily interested in today is the mlg.zip. Once that's unzipped, you will find inside that folder is the static linked library we're looking for. So we'll just drag that one into our code area. We will also need the include file. but today we'll not be using the dynamic link library. We want our static linked library to be embedded inside our executable. So we start with a completely blank sheet of paper here. What we're going to do first of all is we're going to create a little dialogue. So first of all we'll save this. And we'll call it nlggrid.bass. And we'll nip inside forms and we will design a little form. So we'll set the styles on our form so that it's centered on screen and it has a minimize system menu and a caption. So having got all that in place, we will add a button and this will be the exit from the application button. So having set that up, what we're going to do with this application is we're going to use it as a mechanism for displaying CSV files. So a very simple form for our application. If we save that, overwrite the file we just created, and we're in. There was a bit of debris code at the bottom which we can just remove, and we're ready to start coding. Now PowerBasic has actually added a number of encode files for you. The Windows API, the common controls, and the forms. We'll put our code below that. Now what we're going to be putting in is a static linked library. So we'll need to refer to that and link it in with our application. So there will be a link command and the name of our static linked library. Now before we actually call that we want to include the include file that comes with my little grid. And additionally, to tell the encode file that we're going to be using the static link library as opposed to the dynamic link library, we are going to create and set a constant. This tells the library that we're going to be using the static link library. So that's the initial preparation of the My Little Grid library. What we'll want to do now is we'll want to put in some of our own libraries. These are ones prepared in previous videos. We have a utility library for handling the calls to my little grid. We have another utility library for doing standard input and output to files and we have a macros one as well. Now having set all that up we can now go to the form itself. Now in our form all we're doing is we're displaying the form on screen and we're showing an exit button. So before we do anything else, we'll nip inside the event handler, inside our callback function, and we'll put some code in behind the exit button to exit the application. A simple dialog end. So if we try a compile on that now, just to make sure we haven't missed anything, it's compiling cleanly. If we run that now, we should get a dialog on screen with an exit button, which we can quite happily click on to exit the application. So that's the skeleton of the application done. So how do we get our grid on the screen? 
Well, if we go to where the dialogue is defined, we want to put in our grid. I'll just put some notes in here at the top, as we had in our previous videos, just to indicate what all these options we're going to be setting actually mean. The very first thing you'll want to do is to initialize the grid library. So what we want to do with this application is we want it to be able to actually load up a CSV file and display it in a grid. Before we actually do the coding for our grid here, I think we want to actually prompt the user to select a CSV file when the application loads. So let's go back to the PB main and we'll do our groundwork in there. So this is where the main dialog is actually shown on screen. I'm going to create a couple of local variables in here. And we're going to actually set these flags so when we call the open file, so we'll set these flags so the user can only select files that currently exist. And then we'll use the display open file command to open a dialog. So all these parameters are actually doing, we're prompting the user to select a file to load a CSV file. We're starting where the executable happens to be at the moment and we're prompting for CSV files specifically. And if the user does actually select a file, we're going to save that into the STR file name variable. And we are going to take that variable and we're going to pass it as a parameter to our dialog. So the path to the file will be passed to the dialog so the dialog can then display it inside the grid. So we can go back to our dialog creation and we'll want to put in our next parameter which is the path and the name of the file. Now that we've passed a parameter to our dialog we want to load the file into an array. Now we're going to use a library routine to pull in the CSV file straight into an array. And the routine we're going to be using is fun read the CSV file into an array. Now this takes two parameters. First of all takes the file name which we passed in here. So it knows where to find a file and we'll also need to give it an array. So we will dimension our array at the top. And if we have a quick look at that routine, we'll see what it's actually doing. It's doing much the same as previous routines. It will take in the file name and the array by reference. It will then open the file name for input, work out how many records it's got to do. It will then read the first line of data. It will work out how many columns there are in the data we're bringing in using the parse count with no delimiter. So it's assuming CSV file structure here. We'll then redimension an array for the number of records and the number of columns. So we're redimensioning a two-dimension array and then a couple of nested for next loops to step through the data we're pulling in and it effectively puts that data into our two-dimensional array. And assuming all is well, it will return true to the function. So if we get this far, we know we've actually managed to read the data into an array. So the next thing to do is to add the grid itself to the array. Now, since we already know how big the array actually is, we know how many columns there are, we know how many rows there are, we can pick up that data quite happily from the array itself by using the uBound command. So if we create another couple of variables to pull that information in, the first one to work out how many rows there are using the one dimension of the uBound, and the second command to work out how many columns there are based on the second dimension. So we need two more variables, one for rows and one for columns. Doing it this way gives us an advantage because since we know how many rows and columns there are, we can actually prep our grid for that size specifically. So we're going to add my little grid 
and I've embedded in here in the R predicate for the number of rows and the C for the number of columns, taking all the parameters we had before. We're using the IDC grid 1 as the handle to our grid and the handle we're going to be using for programmatic access is hgrid1. We'll need those two right at the beginning of our code. So we go back up here, we can quite happily create those here. So having gotten that far, we will have put the grid onto the screen, we will have picked up its handle, we can now go ahead and attempt to put the information into it. Now since there's only going to be one tab on this, we'll just do a quick rename of the tab. Now this uses another library routine in our My Little Grid Utilities. And if we have a quick look at that one. Rename tab. Which basically sets the name of the tab based on the value you pass in. So we're just going to rename that tab. We need to give it two parameters, well three parameters. First of all the grid handle. Next one will be the tab number. Now there's only going to be one tab so one will be the default. And how big we want it to be. Let's go for a nice round 300. Now if we just try running that code now. Uh, what have we missed? Oh yes. Because we've changed the parameter numbers in the display CSV file, the designer will have put these declarations in at the top. Now you can quite happily delete both of these because PowerBasic will do that on the fly when it runs. Oh yes, I put 300 in there. What I want is the actual name of the tab. So let's try that. We try running that now. We select our file and it displays our grid. Now it's displaying a big black X on our grid at the moment. Now we can quite happily clear that. That's a throwback to when the application was actually purchased application and there was a licensing code to put in. So all we have to do to handle that is a simple message before we start doing anything with the grid. So we paste this in, the send message to hgrid1, that should get rid of our X. Which it does. There's no data displaying at the moment, but what we can do in one line of code is put our data in quite happily. After we've renamed the tab, and before we refresh the grid, we're going to make use of one of the functions in my little grids library. The put x function allows you to put an entire array straight into the grid. So we give it, in this case, four parameters. We need to give it the grid handle. We need to give it the array, which is str work. And two additional parameters. Now if we run that and select our file, we'll see that our data quite happily pops into the grid. Now what we also want to do is our grid's actually too wide for this control, so we need to narrow the grid down slightly. Plus we'll see that the columns aren't quite wide enough for the data within the grid. Now there's another function in our library which we can quite happily call on called widen columns in grid and what this will do is it will dynamically size the columns based on the data within it. So having put the data into the grid all we have to do is a call to that one routine and it should widen it. We'll also narrow the size of our grid Let's take it down to 530. Pick our file and there's our grid nicely sized on screen with all the columns wide enough to support the data that's contained within them. So in a very short amount of code we've actually managed to display a CSV file in a grid in individual cells. 
Now we can of course add on the colour banking controls we did in our last video. Calling another one of our inbuilt functions. And there we have colour bank data. So you'll see with a very few commands we can actually have a grid situated on any of your dialogues and loaded in one line of code from an array. I've left room above the grid where you can put in things like a toolbar, where you can put buttons in for perhaps saving the grid and loading a new grid. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching.